Cambodia, a country with a traumatic recent history. Between 1975 and 1979, the Khmer Rouge decimated almost a quarter of the population through a regime of terror. The totalitarian experiment destroyed much of Cambodia's infrastructure. By 1979, fewer than 40 doctors were left in the entire country. The public health system effectively wiped out in a span of five years. The newly established Cambodian province of Pai Lin, 2010. In the former Khmer Rouge stronghold, economic development is still in its infancy. Morbidity and mortality from diseases such as malaria have plagued the countryside. Since the 1970s, Pai Lin and the border area between Thailand and Cambodia have been ground zero for the emergence of drug-resistant malaria. At present, there is evidence that the last effective drug against the virulent strain of falciparum malaria, called artemisinins, is also beginning to lose its effectiveness. Since 2007, the World Health Organization, donors, and national stakeholders have developed a strategy to contain this deadly drug-resistant malaria at its source. This containment project is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Global Fund for AIDS, TB, and Malaria, with technical guidance from the World Health Organization. A major effort has been underway to contain the disease, mobilizing massive amounts of human resources and an arsenal of disease-fighting commodities. We uh, have uh, divided the area in two zones. Zone 1 and Zone 2. Zone 1, we have four provinces. These four provinces, we have around uh, more than 200,000 population. And Zone 2, we have nine provinces, more than four million population. So uh, this the province in Zone 1 is a very uh, important uh, area where we strongly control. We provide all uh, our... Uh, material equipment, medicine, and our deploy the people also in this uh, zone one. That's why we can see uh, uh, the very good result in this area that uh, uh, no counterfeit drugs and the cases reduce. Uh, and like you can see, larger in Thailand, as a country as zone one, is no that's in this area. One tool that's been effective so far, and I think it's 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 being proven as we speak, is the supply and training of. People at the village, volunteers at the village, we call uh, village malaria workers or VMWs. And these VMWs uh, take it upon themselves in their villages to um, diagnose and treat people in their village with, uh, uh, with an RDT, a rapid diagnostic test, which, which they can easily perform using a pinprick of blood. They can see whether the person has malaria or not. And, and provide free diagnosis through the RDT and treatment uh, for the patient. And that's been, uh, that's been very effective. Village malaria workers are used on the front lines at the village level as a key component of the containment project. They also provide essential and up-to-date reporting to the national program about the incidence of new infections and where they are occurring. Besides the local villagers, the project targets hard-to-reach, vulnerable populations such as migrants and mobile agricultural laborers. These groups are at high risk of malaria due to their proximity to forested areas, which are prime breeding grounds for the anopheline vector. The containment project isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. Tried and true tools which are effective for malaria control are utilized, such as long-lasting, insecticide-treated bed nets. Actually, we've talked a lot about, about drugs and testing, but the way you stop malaria is by preventing people from being bitten by infected mosquitoes. And it's certain mosquitoes that are nighttime biting that transmit malaria. The, the bed net itself pr does provide a physical barrier against the mosquito. But in addition, the bed nets that we're distributing, we've distributed half, half a million nets already in, in, in this project, uh, are insecticide treated, which adds an, an extra level of, of protection by either killing some mosquitoes or driving others away by a repellent effect. In focus screening and treatment, the containment team tests everyone from the 10 most malarious villages. After recording detailed patient information, villagers have their temperatures taken and anyone who is symptomatic or is suspected of having malaria will be tested with a rapid diagnostic test, also known as a dipstick test. A pinprick blood sample is taken which will be used in the dipstick test, microscopic analysis on blood slides, 
as well as for molecular analysis using PCR. Someone testing positive for malaria will immediately begin treatment under direct supervision by the malaria workers, including follow-up treatment for the next three days. The PCR can find, theoretically, any parasite in the blood sample. What we're trying to do is find every last hidden case of malaria, even if they're asymptomatic. A crucial piece of this puzzle is ensuring that the life-saving anti-malarial medicines are of the highest quality. Uh, we're very concerned about the quality of anti-malarial drugs at this point because they are driving in this region the emergence of uh, artemisinin and resistant uh, uh, falciparum malaria. Uh, that is, uh, the continued presence of artemisinin in uh, monotherapies and substandard drugs are uh, providing selection pressure for resistance, which is creating the problem of the resistant parasites. The, the private sector is still, still uh, providing substandard and even counterfeit drugs. But the government of Cambodia has installed justice police who inspect all the outlets on a regular basis and they look both, they do inventory and, and stock checking and we're, we're already getting anecdotal evidence that this is having an impact. It's not perfect, you know, it, it's not as if one day it's bad and you, then you flip a switch and the next day it's good, but I say the, the, the situation is getting much better. The justice police are, through a, through a car, carrot and stick approach, are providing the penalty if uh, outlets don't comply, but they're also providing encouragement of doing the right thing. We're in a, a very good situation right now because we've, we're properly resourced to take all the necessary steps to eliminate transmission of malaria. Now, I don't, I don't say that right now we've eliminated malaria, and I don't think we'll do that in the next five years. I, I've been in this game long enough to know that anything can go wrong. But when you put the proper tools in the hands of people who know what they're doing, which is happening here in Cambodia, give them enough, enough resources, and by that I mean the money to, to go out into the field, you need, you need boots on the ground and you need wheels on the road. And, and you can't do it otherwise. And that's, that's what's happening right now. We've, we've got the pieces in place and we're gonna be able to spread it all the way across the country from west to east. And I expect that we're gonna see results. We've reduced uh, malaria substantially in zone one and zone two. And these efforts have been recognized. And I think basically round nine global fund uh, funding will come in and provide um, support to the whole country. In general, in six months of 2010, you can see the deaths only 38 deaths compared to 2009, 138. And the cases, you know, confirmed cases, I just as I about con confirmed cases, uh, less than last year, 5,000 cases. You know, uh, so that is, a, is a, uh, talking about the control of mortality, morbidity is a very successfully, uh, we should recognize that.